let's talk about a very specific type of diffusion, known as osmosis. Osmosis is a very specific type of diffusion. In a liquid solution, the solute will move to equalize the concentration gradient. Just a reminder, the solute is the dissolved component, whether we're talking about sugar or salt, whatever material is dissolved into the larger volume of liquid or gas. So the solute will attempt to move to equalize the concentration gradient. But surprisingly, the solvent will also attempt to move, this being the water or the gas mixture that's largest in concentration. An important concept to remember when we talk about the concentration of a solution, if there's a high concentration of solute, we're also saying that there is a low concentration of solvent. The opposite is also true. And so diffusion is always movement from a high concentration of a substance towards a low concentration of a substance. The plasma membrane of a cell is selectively permeable, allowing water to pass through, but not electrically charged ions or large molecules. In those times, when there are different solute concentrations on either side of a plasma membrane, and those ions or those solutes are not able to pass through the plasma membrane, well, the solvent, the water, is able to pass through the plasma membrane. And so the solvent will still move to equalize the concentration gradient, even if the solute is not able to pass through that membrane. Osmosis is a specific form of diffusion. When the solvent is the molecule, which is moving across the membrane. In cells, the solvent is always water. Water is moving in order to equalize the concentration gradient on both sides of the membrane. Or another way of thinking about this, the water is moving to dilute the more concentrated solution so that the solutions on both sides of the membrane will be equal. Here we have a theoretical experiment where we have a U-shaped test tube that has two different sugar solutions. Now, these two sugar solutions, they have different concentration. One side has more sugar dissolved in the water. The other side has less sugar. And down at the very bottom of the horseshoe, there is a selectively permeable membrane. This membrane allows water to pass through, but it blocks the larger sugar molecules. If we allow the test tube to sit as it currently is, after a short period of time, we'll notice that the levels of solution on both sides of the membrane will change because even though the sugar is not able to pass from one solution to the other, the water is able to pass through that membrane. In essence, diluting that more concentrated solution. Now there are a few terms I would like to introduce you to that are important when discussing osmosis and diffusion. If a solution has a higher solute concentration compared to another, it is said to be hypertonic. In this case, hyper meaning above or more, and tonic referring to dissolved materials, whether it's salt or other materials. So a hypertonic solution has more stuff dissolved into it compared to another solution. The solution that has less stuff dissolved into it is hypotonic. In this case, hypo meaning below or under. So a hypotonic solution has a lower concentration of solute. Now, after diffusion occurs, both solutions will be equal. And so we use the term isotonic. 
Now, one thing that's so important to remember about these three terms, hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic, is that we can only use these terms when we're comparing two or more different solutions. And the term we use to describe a solution may vary based on which solutions we're comparing it to. So for instance, if I had a glass of fresh water and a glass of seawater, which of those two solutions would be hypertonic? Well, the answer is the seawater. It has more stuff dissolved into it compared to the fresh water. Now, what if I had a glass of seawater and then a glass of water from the Dead Sea, which is about 10 times saltier than most other oceans? Well, suddenly, the water from the Dead Sea is hypertonic, meaning the water from the ocean is hypotonic compared to that other solution. Now, if I had two glasses of seawater from the same place collected at the same time, is one hypertonic and the other hypotonic? Well, likely, they're both going to be the same. And so we would say those two solutions are isotonic. So these terms, again, we can only use them when comparing solutions to other solutions. Back to our example with that horseshoe-shaped test tube, we now see the hypotonic solution is the one that has less sugar dissolved into it. The hypertonic solution is the one that has more sugar dissolved into it. So even though the sugar cannot move, the water, the solvent, is able to diffuse through that bottom membrane, and we end up with two solutions that are isotonic. Now, why is this significant? Why is this important to understand for biology and for health sciences? Well, it goes back to how cells work. If plant cells are placed into an isotonic solution, they're not going to have a lot of water rushing into their cells. And plant cells actually love to have water rushing into them. Plant cells love to take up fresh water from their roots and carry that water up through their leaves and branches, uh, filling their cells and, and using that water for photosynthesis. Now, if you put a plant into a hypertonic solution, very salty water, it's actually going to cause that plant cell to shrivel. That plant cell will end up losing water um, and the plant cell will become very flaccid. So a plant is usually happiest when it's surrounded with hypotonic solutions, and that's mainly due to the cell walls, which enables it to apply internal pressure. Now, when we look at an animal cell, for instance, a human blood cell, human cells want to be in an isotonic solution. They want the ionic concentration outside of the cell to match what's inside of the cell. That way, just as much fluid moves into the cell as out of the cell, and the cell is able to function normally. Now, if we put some of these human cells into a hypertonic solution, one in which there's a higher concentration of solutes outside of the cell, well, water within the cell is going to rush out, attempting to dilute the surrounding liquids. Conversely, if a human cell is placed into a hypotonic solution, water is going to start rushing into the cells, and the cells will swell to the point of bursting. It's for this reason that understanding how the body reacts to hypertonic and hypotonic solutions is so important. It's also for this reason that in a medical setting, even if a patient comes in with extreme dehydration, the IV solution that they're going to receive is not going to be pure distilled water. Instead, it's going to be a saline solution that can, in a, a safe manner, bring up the patient's hydration level to a safe point so that it will be isotonic with that saline solution. In the next video, we're going to talk about moving large objects and large amounts of objects into and out of the cell.